Mary, before you even say it, okay, we can't go any farther. We have a special announcement that must be made today. It is on this date, December 20th, in the year 2023, that Barry Phillips, none other than our beloved Barry Phillips, is now eligible for Social Security. (laughs) Good morning and happy birthday. (laughs) You know, since the first grade, I've been working to achieve this here uh, uh, achievement, (laughs) this threshold. (laughs) Was that your first year or second year in first grade? Uh, uh, Somewhere in the middle of the two, I think. (laughs) Happy birthday, man. Uh, it was a load of encouragement when I failed kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, no, didn't even get to go. Uh, <laughs> All right. Now that I've messed up your opening thoughts, try to get back there and go for it again. Yeah, let me see if I can reel that back in. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, in Acts 3, Shimon Kifa. Simon Peter stands up and he begins uh, a a sermon, um, probably as close to um, a perfect sermon as we have found since the Sermon on the Mount. Pretty good one. He says in verse 19, repent. (laughs) What a way to start out. Repent, Mm -hmm. therefore, and turn back. For the blood in out of your sins, in order that the times of refreshing might come from the presence of the master. Yeah. Um, the restoration of all things is what he here is referencing in verse 21, talking about Yeshua Messiah, who needs to, heaven needs to receive until the times of restoration of all matters. Refreshing. Restoration preceded by the necessary element of repentance. I had a thought, Mike, and viewing the large landscape of the faith community and all of its varying presentations. We have here in America, you have an extreme maybe of the Amish with their unique culture and approach to life and appearance. When you see them out in public, I bet you're, I bet you're Amish, and we can tell them quickly, especially when they're parking their horse and buggy at Walmart. Yeah. Uh, we laugh. I, I know someone's been out west, and there are stalls at certain Walmarts for horse and buggy parking. Oh, yeah. Up north of you, in fact, I've been in that same area. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Israel, uh, it's very easily seen that there are uh, what we call Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox in their particular presentation and dress. Uh, here, you, we can go to a Hebrew Roots conference, and you see beards, no beards, length of beards, head coverings, no head coverings, all manners of presentations. What's what's at, at, at stake here, Mike, is for us to have a us and them mindset that I can't relate to that Amish guy or to that Orthodox man or to that brother that does differently than I do because, well, they're different. And because they look different, they must be different, and we'll never have a, a conversation of any any significance. But Yah here is saying that there is times of refreshing, and then there is the restoration of all things. When we see these two sticks that Ezekiel talked about coming together and being one, everybody's not going to shop at the same clothing store. Everyone's not going to comb their hair and part it on the same side if they have hair. Uh how do we develop a mindset and then be able to pass this on to our rising generations 
that we love and accept people for who they are, the way that they are, without compromising and, and accepting that which is over the edge and out of the bounds. Mm. There has to be a heart among us of Yeshua who is accepting of a variety of approaches of people. But yeah, he knows where the line is. It's like, no, no, wait a minute. That's got to change. Somehow, you know, there there is a line somewhere between acceptable and unacceptable. But we're, you know, we have to love in, in the middle of all of that. I, I'm kind of thinking that maybe it would be a, a great gift that the Almighty could give to the population of the world is that we were able to go through our daily lives the same as we are today, uh, getting up, going to work, driving to work, um, you know, whatever somebody wants to do. But we would we would have maybe like a month of that, that we would do so without our uh, ability to see. So we, we would go through life having to discuss things with people not knowing what they looked like not knowing if they had a, a beard that was you know closely trimmed or had payout uh the curls on the side not knowing if a person was wearing a head covering or not uh not not knowing the color of a uh, man or woman's skin what their height was their whether they were were tall or vertically challenged, uh, whether they were large or small, but we just had to go through uh, a, a month and just interact with people. And at the end of the month, you would get your sight back and figure out that you had judged a person not by their outward appearance, as uh, as as was said to uh, to David. Or uh, regarding the the calling of David, to, said to uh, um, to Samuel, but that the Almighty looks at our our inward being, not at our outward being. Let's take that into another thought. I, I've been thinking about this since we talked briefly yesterday about this. I'm, I'm probably going to post this on Facebook next few days. Religion is a life lived from the outside in. Relationship is a life lived from the inside out. What do you think about that statement? I, well, that's definitely something. That's a windshield thought, Mike, where you're riding down a road and I uh, got plenty of time to ponder something. Yeah, I can see the validity of that. Mm -hmm. So, So everything that you described there from the Amish to the uh, to the Orthodox, you know, to going into a Messianic congregation and being able to figure out pretty fast if they're if they're you know one house, two house, um, you know, whatever this is. You, you go into a country club, you can tell the same because you walk in, and you read the room from the outside in. You see how people are dressed. You see their mannerisms. You watch their interaction. But yet, you know, as a speaker, um, it is very easy, and I've done this on occasion, it is very easy to misread the room because you looked at the outward appearance. And it is not until you start to interact with people. Give you give you an example from years ago. Uh, when I first started, I was I was very intimidated in the early days, <clears throat> and um, so I I would um, you know I, I would I would judge myself based on <clears throat> other teachers and stuff, and I'm like um, you know well I hope they don't ask me you know anything really <laughs> really deep, um, and, and so I always thought well you know these messy congregation they've been around for a while I mean they're going to know everything and. And one of them called called me and said, "You know, the story for uh, we'd like you to come, but you know, we only study on the sowed level, <laughs> you know, that the mystic <laughs> level. Okay, we we only study on the sowed level. So <laughs> I, I get there, and there's Hebrew on the walls, and there's you know the zit zit and the head coverings and all these things. 
And uh, pretty much I figured out after interacting with the people that if I was going to sit, if I was going to teach on the show far that day, I had to teach them which end to blow through. <laughs> Because, because all the trappings were there of knowledge, of wisdom, of great information. But in the end, it was just outward appearance. And, and I think that Yeshua talked about that, you know, regarding the, some of the religious leaders of the day, your, your, your whitewashed tombs, but inside your dead men's bones. Yeah. Um, how much of that is still true today? in uh in this walk that um you know we look good we got the the menorah up there in the front and we got an israel flag and you know we got we got all these things but is is it still is it really changed that much what what's the depth what's inside it, you know it, it i was just talking to hanok uh, uh you know israel update you get you get my <laughs> my after hanok uh messages <laughs> And, um, you know, I'm watching it happen, Barry, that, um, you know, standing with Israel is, is still a fad. Uh, my, my thanks, by the way, to you, to House of David, for a, a generous donation that came in a couple of days ago. It's already in Israel uh, being used right now. But, uh, you know, it, the, the fad, originally it was you know, like, wow, where do I give? Where do I get? Now it's, you know, now we're starting to see who's supporting Israel from the inside out. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I, I think that this time of year kind of proves who's following the Torah, guarding the Torah, whatever you want to, however you want to term the word Shamar, who's doing it from the outside in and who's doing it from the inside out. And, and in the process of that, Barry, if we're not doing it from the inside out, is it that it is the generation that is coming after us, what I term as the rising generation, that will never rise because I can pass along outward trappings that will not help them to endure the battle that it takes for the lifestyle and the relationship with the Almighty that they need, and therefore watch them one by one be picked off by the trappings of religion and uh, basically all that we have done to fight for to get to where we are now just becomes a page in the book of meaninglessness because people just decided to go back to Egypt. I think I said too much and all that, but we'll see. A lot of sermon material in there if you want to use yeah, it. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. Mike, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, people that we see, maybe that we know, especially of uh, younger generations, um, their styles and their um, uh, personal choices of presentation. We look at that and, and we immediately, as you said, we judge, we, we determine about them whether they're approachable or unapproachable. Um, before we criticize too much the young girl that the trend right now is to wear bare midriff style clothing, uh, even in the cold weather. Uh, I have a, on, on my Facebook page, you know, you have stuff, uh, ads or pages or whatever that will, will pop up and you're like, where did this come from? And, uh, one that's interesting is, 1970s flashback and it shows pictures of you know guys working on their uh muscle car out in the driveway or hanging out at school or whatever and um some of the young ladies from the 1970s 
I, I look at how that they dressed then, and I remember, oh yeah, oh yeah, not a whole lot different than some some young. Well, this would be their granddaughters or maybe even great granddaughters that are walking around now looking like grandma or great grandma, as the case might be. And I realized, uh, not a lot's changed. You know, I just forgot how that we dressed back then. Matter of fact, now that I remember, the the trend was uh, for for the guys, we would put a T-shirt on, but it was cut right here. Because that's that's the T-shirt we wore under our shoulder not, pads for football. Not in my not in my neighborhood. Oh, dude, we had six packs where I, in my neighborhood. I don't know what you had back in there. Not not you not you that you drank either. But uh, anyway, I, that we'll, we'll, we'll slide I'm, right on. I'm by gonna that leave line. that alone. <laughs> yeah. Cut abs, man. Anyway, um, we we make determinations without understanding what their home life's about, what their past experience has been. We don't know how fractured or hurting or needy that they are. That a simple conversation or a smile or a hello might might open a door to, to help them. There are people that Yah is wanting to include in the restoration of all things that we will not personally choose without thinking or realizing that we might not be the choice that someone else would make. They may be wondering, how did you get in here? You, you know, your beard's not right, or you don't have a keeper on, or your seat seat's tied wrong. How did you get in here? And we, we can find every reason in the world to exclude or distance ourselves from someone and I think Yeshua is saying, you need to figure out how to tie a string to them and be connected. In Israel, just a few months ago, the nation was divided almost right down the middle and completely in half between those of one mindset about the Supreme Court as opposed to the other. And they had opposing rallies with about you know equal number of it <clears throat> attendance, and each side had great passion and ferocity of, of voice and so forth. But when the war started on October 7th, you didn't hear any more about that. Nope. And suddenly those of different mindsets were standing side by side on battlefields and covering one another and fighting for each other. And the nation now is trying to figure out uh, how how do we overcome our obstacles? The news, you know, you shared and uh, Hanoka shared about uh, those that were moved out of their townships and, and villages because of proximity to battle lines had nowhere to go. So strangers were saying, I got a room. I can take so many. I don't read anywhere where they were asking, by the way, which side of the argument were you on? Mm-hmm. It was just recognizing here is a fellow Israeli that is in need, and I have the opportunity and the ability to help them. I'm going to do so. Will it take great hardship and calamity or tragedy or attack or war for the body of Messiah to stop arguing, debating, distancing and judging ourselves and say, you have a need. I have the ability to meet it. Let me help you. Well, you know, maybe there's a reason, Barry, that the scripture ends with the book of Revelation. It's a battle. It's a war. Uh, what would bring us as a people together? Um, it, it's not prosperity. It, prosperity never brings people together, really. Uh, it is time of war. It's time of battle. And you're exactly right. What happened in Israel uh, approximately 74 days ago is uh, what brought the nation together in a way that now I was over there during the Intifada, uh, the Azo Wars from 2000 to 2004. Uh, I've, I've been there. You've been there with me. In uh, I, I saw 
yeah, I saw unity at that, but I've never seen unity at this level that I know of in Israel today. Uh, it is because your life is on the line. And it, it's like being in a foxhole. You know, we, we in America, America has been pretty cushy for a lot of years in that we have not had a war on our own soil since the Civil War. Um, you know, Vietnam was was over there. And the only, you know, you got to see it through Walter Cronkite. Um, even Iraq, Iran, I, I know for, I have friends that were in, uh, you know, have been in Fallujah and, and various places. It's still distant. But when war comes to your doorstep, something changes. When you, when all of a sudden it's your life and your children, your grandchildren who are at stake, uh, you're you're in a foxhole. You don't ask the person, you know what what's your um, you know what what do you think uh, uh, about um, you know this style of of camo this year that they've just come out with. Uh, you know I, I really like the old camouflage better, don't you? No, you ask them if you know how to shoot that gun. Um, I'll give you an example when, and and I, I appreciate every donation that's come in for Israel. I had someone that sent a donation uh, a few a, a couple, about a month ago or so, and in the, in the in the notes, and I, I follow those notes, and I try my best to to direct funds where people want them to go. In the end, you know, it's it's discretionary, but uh, in the notes, it was you know, could you please send this to to messianic believers in the land. And and I emailed him back, and I wasn't being judgmental at all, but um, I, I just I understand what people are trying to do. And I said I cannot guarantee that. I said I would be glad to refund this to you if you'd like, but in all of the years that I have been giving funds to Israel, I have never once asked anybody what they believe, and I refuse to ever do that. Um. I want to know one thing and one thing only. Are they on the right side? If they're supporting the Arab, uh, Palestinian, again, there's no such thing as Palestine. Uh, please, anyone take that out of your vocabulary. Uh, if, they're, if they're supporting the Palestinian cause, the Hamas cause, the Hezbollah cause, the, the PLO cause, you, you're not getting a dime of my money. Uh, you're not getting that through a donation or giving it to a, 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 an Arab shop owner. It's not going there. I don't care. The only thing I, I care about is what side are you on? And I think the greatest thing that could happen to us today, Barry, is that we or we enter into a place that you the, the lines become drawn and the lines are no longer republican or democrat mm -mm. the republic the, the the line is drawn god or not that would be a great day i don't know i don't i don't say that i i um I look forward to that because I think I understand what it's going to be like. But uh, you know, if you're if you're battle line today, and we're going to have to hear this diatribe for the next year, if your battle line is Democrat and Republican, I dare say you're fighting the wrong war. We need to figure out what the true war is because. If not, um, the outcome for each of us may not be what we really expect or desire. I'm thinking. I'm my mind is stuck on college age uh, people, young young folks, mm -hmm. many of whom are within the the ranks of our belief and our particular walk. And uh, the idea that if they are disillusioned because of our 
staunch ideas and and dividing lines, then they will follow the, an illusion instead. If we are not rightly, righteously presenting what Yeshua has called us to, number one, we shouldn't really want them to follow in those steps to continue propagating what we are. Uh, we have to we have to be mindful, Mike. Am I a restorer? Am I a rebuilder of the breach? Am I a rebuilder of Ephraim's stick? Or do I have a saw in my hand? Do I have a hammer or a saw? Which way am I working this thing? Our minds immediately, probably because of whatever religious trainings that we've had. Well, you know, you just can't accept everybody. You can't. You just can't open up the door and say everybody come on in. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what you're doing, how you're living. No, that's that's the other side of the extremes. When we are gathered together, we're called to a righteous mindset and heart. That doesn't mean my style is your style. That doesn't mean that my yeah. manner is your manner. But Yeshua said, if they're not against us, they're with us. Now, that's been erroneously preached, I'm sure, in a dozen different ways. Yeah. But Yeshua was saying, don't, necessar- don't make unnecessary enemies among yourselves. If they're gathering with us, just because they're a sack that they're gathering is a different color or they, they harvest at a different pace or a different style. If they're harvesting, let them harvest. Let, let them work. Among the gardeners in, in the middle of us, you will get a dozen different approaches to how you set out your, your, your plants in the springtime. What soil, what fertilizer, what style of plants, what you plant close to each other. Everybody's got their own techniques and pruning ideas and those kinds of things. And I, I didn't know that there was such an industry until I looked online and started watching YouTube videos. and like, oh, my goodness. Um, so we need to allow differences and yeah. find common ground. That being said, it does make us uncomfortable. You know, if everybody was just like me, then I know exactly how how to approach everybody and and what to say. When there's a different crowd in front of you, I've done that. You know, you go, you fly from one place to another, to another place in the nation. Mm. You don't know what teaching they've been exposed to. You don't know what their past history is. And yeah, you look out and you think, okay, this one looks that way and that one looks the other way. And where we would divide them, they sit close to each other and they're interacting and they're getting along. And it's like, how does that happen? It is the love of Messiah. The restoration of all things, the times of refreshing, is based on repentance. And repentance is sometimes or most times toward the Father. Father, I recognize your word says this, and I'm living otherwise. I repent. I turn from that. Like sometimes repentance is also to someone else. The prep, the, the what was previous to this in chapter two, men from all nations were gathered because of Shavuot. The feast day of Shavuot gathered people together of a variety of languages and cultures and understandings, but they had this in common. I need to be in Jerusalem for Shavuot. It was the things uh, we claim as Hebraic roots that belong to us that was unifying people. And we're using the same things to separate ourselves. If our, if our rising generations, our following generations are going to do any better than we are, we got to present a different model. 
And that goes back to what I was talking about of living it from the inside out. Uh, I just read the words of, of Yeshua yesterday. Many will come and say, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not cooked challah bread in your name? <laughs> have we not tied zitzit in your name? Have we not sounded show? Yeah, I, I'm adding a little bit there. He will say, depart from me, I never knew you. The word knew you is an intimate term. And the best translation that we could use there, and I can go back to the to the verses on it, uh, the translation should be, you who practice Torahlessness. Um, and if anybody wants to look at the context of that, they can go to Ezekiel 22 and read that chapter. Um, or, or, again, are we, are, are we teaching something from the inside out? Um, if, if we're living it from the outside in, Barry, we will be known by our compromise uh, and our, and our children, our children are the ones that see the compromise Yeah, because you can talk about Shabbat all day, but they know what you're really talking about on the way to service and from service. Um, it, we can, we can do all the outward appearance, but if our, if our children don't see it, that we're living it from the inside out, is it really going to make a difference in the end? The upcoming approaching at the time it's recorded, the approaching uh, tour portion by Yigosh is the reunion of brothers that used to fight. Yeah. And we'd like to say, well, you know, it was just 11 or maybe 10 against one. They squabbled among themselves when when uh, Joseph starts uh, pushing their buttons. Reuben is standing up. I told y'all. Mm -hmm. I told you about that boy. And they start blaming each other. Yeah, it's your fault. No, it's not my fault. It's your fault. You're the one that said. And that's you know. And when Yeshua, um, Yeshua, when Joseph has revealed himself to them and sends them back home to get daddy. His last instruction is don't quarrel among yourselves on the way home. You know, Mike, there is this genetic code in us. And I don't want to over-elaborate the, the, the idea of divisiveness and so forth. It is a reality. At the same time, uh, I think back to Revive this past summer. I saw a variety of people in their presentation and styles standing and talking together, laughing, uh, having conversations. You didn't see all the people of one, one presentation over here and divided against all the other ones over there. I didn't see that. And that was a good thing. And that doesn't mean, you know, it, everything's been fixed. But we tend to find reasons to say, well, you know, they're different. They're different. And we build these little subtle walls between ourselves. We have to stop that. And case in point, at the time again that we're recording, uh, a major religious holiday is around the corner. And uh, people are going to be wearing uh, holiday garb and sweaters and wishing us uh, uh, holiday sentiments. And we cringe. Somebody said something to me yesterday. I was out in public, and um, I got the Merry Christmas thing. And I, bef before I could think, I just simply said, "Thank you." Yeah, I, you know, you know why? Why go any farther than that? I used to say, uh, "Appreciate it," but I don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, what kind of message am I preaching? 
um, so I can just simply say, thanks, appreciate that, and let it go. I understand what they're saying, their, their well-wished sentiment. I can be um, I can be a Scrooge and a buy a humbug in public and wear a scowl and cringe when I hear jingle bells one more time. I think I'm going to scream. Um, or I can get over it and realize I know where these people are at. Yeah. Because I used to be there myself. That's right. And uh, so I need to stop judging them. They're not they're not dying and going into eternal torment because they put up a tree. I disagree with it. I have my understandings. I'm fervent in my understanding, but I'm not allowed to point my finger at them and be harsh in my attitude toward them. I have to understand if he can speak to me, he can speak to them but he probably won't use my mouth to do so. Well, we need to be willing to, or we need to be ready to give an account for those that are seeking truth. But uh, for those that have not yet, you know, I I remember the words of uh, someone from years ago. Um, It's a very difficult, it's not good to wake up somebody that doesn't want to be woke up. (laughs) Yeah. Try that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't, you don't need to be their alarm clock. When the, when the father wants to wake them up, be there to talk to them. Until then, you know, I mean, you can you can judge them for sleeping, okay, or for anything else. But I think it'd be best uh, for each of us to to make sure that we're doing this because of the right reasons, because of a relationship with him not just to impress other people. Final thought here. It just came to me, Mike. You said something about people wanting to stay in Egypt. Why would they choose to stay in Egypt? Well, they're just choosing the pagan lifestyle over the righteous. Well, it may be a little more than that. Even in shambles, Egypt may have been appearing more secure and stable than that wild guy, Moshe and his fanciful ideas, who has no idea what's out beyond the horizon. And all those people, they're going to their doom out there in the middle of nowhere following this weirdo dude. We have to be credible. And one of the most credible things that we can do is be joyful about our belief. If you've repented, and the times of refreshing and restoration to come to you, put a smile on your face. Be happy. Walking around with a scowl right now and putting your fingers in your ears is not going to entice anybody or encourage anybody to ask you, what's your joy about? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Sounds good. Folks, thank you for watching. Please share on your social media and encourage your friends. Um, Thank you for your continued prayers and support for Israel. Again, uh, you can send funds to join to Hashem.org through Mike, and uh, he will make sure that they get appropriately placed, meaningfully placed, and um, encourage you to do that. Yeah, yeah. I do have one last question for you, Barry. Did you get the present I sent? Not yet. Same thing you got me last year, right? No, no. I, that's 10 years in a row that it's gotten lost in the mail. I'm mm. tired of this. Well, maybe they'll all come at the same time. Keep believing. <laughs> Journey said something about don't stop believing. Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it takes. I tell you what, next time, next year, just hold it there. I'll come down to your house and get it. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> Same result. <laughs> All right, folks. Sorry, I put it in the mail the day before. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. See you, man. <laughs>